Good afternoon, YouTube. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're in the office and I want to make a quick video on how to properly set up your payroll and fairly pay your drivers. Before I get started, I highly suggest you grab a pen and paper because this information is going to be very important. With this information, you'll be able to reflect back on it if your driver ever questioned their pay scale. Okay, without further ado, let's get into it. First, we want to set up our payroll. Part of your payroll is going to be a bookkeeper, an accountant, as well as a payroll service, such as ADP. I use ADP, I'll leave that link in the description. They're a great company to work with. Next thing you do is have to figure out how you're gonna pay your driver. There's three ways to pay your driver. You have a W-2, or if you pay your driver a W-2, you will have to make sure that driver has benefits, as well as you have to get workers comp. The second way is the most popular way, which is a 1099, which is an independent contractor. Now, I'm in Virginia, and according to Virginia, Employment Commission, which I'm really sure is nationwide, but I know according to Virginia Employment Commission, the tricky thing about 1099 independent contractors is the only way they're an independent contractor if they come with their own equipment. So the issue we run into is, uh, this issue that we run into with our drivers is that our drivers are driving our equipment. So technically, because your driver's driving your equipment, you should be giving them a W-2 because if anything happens to that driver while they're using your equipment, you're liable for it because they're not bringing their own equipment. It's not the same as, for instance, I have a guy that can wash my trucks and he brings his own equipment to wash my truck. So if anything was to happen while he was washing my trucks, although I'm paying him for a service, it's on him. That's not the same is when you're having your drivers use your pallet jack and using your truck, they're using your equipment. So make sure that you're very careful with the 1099 and the drivers that you're hiring because if you get audited, you could be liable for that, all right? So with knowing that information about a 1099 contractor, I highly suggest you have your drivers get an LLC, which is about $150 and in some states is less, you don't have to get an EIM, but it's recommended, and then a business banking account, all right? So that not only will you be protected, your driver will also be able to write off a whole lot more by having those credentials. The third way would be to pay under the table. We highly not recommend that because whatever money that you bring in and just because you paid it out to your driver, but you don't have no record of paying him, you're liable for those taxes. So we stay away from that. All right, now that we have established our payroll system and how to, the three ways that you could possibly pay your drivers, we're gonna move on to the justification of the amount you should pay your drivers. Now, before we get into the actual pay scale, I want everyone to understand what every driver gets paid nationwide. And that'd be the big issue. People try to come up with their own numbers, but we're gonna to stick to what the average driver Pays and we have got the class A salaries, class B, and non CDL. And this information is coming from Glassdoor, so you can research it yourself. Now, I'm in Virginia, I looked up Virginia, then I looked on the west coast, which would be I looked on the west coast, which would be Washington State. All right, and we then looked up those starting salaries for a class A. Starting salary in Virginia is $54,113, which translates to $26.02 an hour. In Washington State, a Class A starting out is $60,988, which translates to $29.32 an hour. In Virginia, a Class B driver starts out at $42,806, which translates to $22.98 an hour. Washington State, Class B drivers start out at an average of $50,245, 20, it was translated to $24.16 an hour. Now, non-CDL drivers, which what well, our drivers are, non-CDLs. The average pay starts between $29,649 to $44,524, which translates to anywhere between $14 and $21 an hour. Now, that is important because when we break down the pay, this is what you can reflect back on if your driver ever questions why they're getting paid what they're getting paid. Now, our pay scale. Zero 
to 100 miles, so 100 miles or less, you're going to pay your driver $100. So to keep it fair and keep the morale in your company, even if that driver drives 40 miles, you still want to pay him $100, okay? So zero to 100 miles, you want to pay your driver $100. Here's your justification. To drive the max 100 miles, take an hour and 40 minutes. The hour and 40 minutes to the destination, then an hour and 40 minutes back home, plus an hour of load time equals four hours and 20 minutes, which translate to $25 an hour, which is over the nation's average max for non-CDLs, which is in line and more than someone with a certificate with a class B license and almost at the same pay rate as a class A driver. So that's how you can explain that. Second way, I mean, second part of that pay scale, a hundred, anything of 100 miles to 145 miles, we're going to pay the driver $125. Here's your justification. The amount of time it takes to drive 145 miles. That time is two hours and four minutes. So you take from facility to destination, two hours and four minutes back home, plus that two hours and four minutes, plus the hour load time will equal five hours and eight minutes, which translates to $24.61 an hour. Once again, over the national uh, pay rate for non-CDLs align directly with Class B drivers. Once again, this is a non-certificate uh uh, uh, this is a non-certificate position. You don't have to have no type of special license or anything, but you still get paid as somebody that had to go pay for their CDLs. All right. Now, if you have, which I don't recommend, I, like in my previous videos, if you watch my previous videos, I suggest that you don't go no more than 145, 150 miles. That's the sweet spot to stay in. But if you do decide to go over that, please don't try to go over 200 miles to see your money. Once again, a quick disclaimer, this is for more Amazon and local routes. I am not dealing with OTR. I'm just dealing with local and Amazon. Nothing that's reaching over 200 miles, okay? So if you're doing anything from 145, if the driver drives anything over 145 miles up to 200 uh, miles, you want to then pay the driver 50 cents for every mile that driver drove over there. All right, guys, now that we done figured out the national average pay rate, compared that to what we're going to pay our drivers, I hope you're now properly prepared for when you're ready to hire employees, okay? I hope this information was helpful. Please like and subscribe, leave a comment below, and we'll see y'all guys next time. Peace.